present identity where was the complete philosophy of comprehensive and including economic system. Based on equity and justice, this book discovers a correlation between the amazing potential of the internet, which he calls the explicit mind of humankind, and the moral message of the same The book presents Gandhi's life and mission in altogether new and integral life. The book also warns its readers that the internet holds the possibility of assuring a non-violent existence in the human race only if the world appears has strong ethical grounding. This is similar as what Gandhi had attempted in his time with the humble skinny way. He had said in Young India, I quote, I think of the poor of India every time that I draw a head on the knee. The poor of India today has lost faith in God, more so than the middle class for the East. For the person suffering from the time of hunger and desiring nothing but to feel his bread is his God. To him, anyone who gives him his bread is his master. To him, he may even see God. To give as to such persons who are sounding all their names to be his oneself and them. What they need is some kind of occupation. And the occupation that will be employed to millions of millions and only be the hands of the continuous describing the continuous have described my feeling as a pills or settlement. And since I believe that where there is pure and active love of the poor, there is God. Also I see God in every shape that I draw on the screen name. In Kharita, he wrote, again I quote, the screen will rules out the exclusiveness. It stands for all inclusiveness. It stands for all including the poor. It therefore requires us to be humble and to foster a pride completely. Do this digital technology have the potential to realize the timeless ideas I just that Mahatma Gandhi cherished and advocated with missionary zeal. Through this campaign for Kali and Dachaka, who tended to become an avatar of the humble skinny way, do digital technology have the potential to promote universal brotherhood, ensure just and all inclusive development, and help build tomorrow's non-violent, harmonious, and ethically guided world? Do it have that bold approach guided by both reason and shield to every aspect of life, from economics to education, from nature to law to environment protection, from church to women's environment, and from politics to business. Mr. Kulkarni answers in yes and says digital technologies have the potential to fulfill his own dream of a peaceful, just, harmonious, and planet friendly, friendly world. Renewal of man-working man antagonism was one of the strategic goals in Gandhi's economy and moral geography, and he made his favorite spiritual machine, the spinning wheel, the emblem of his revolutionary philosophy. But I have some deep and words in my mind. Will the spinning wheel of Hindu be productive like the spinning wheel of Mahatma Gandhi? The spinning wheel of Babu was an effective, careless, and unlimited means of communication. He reached out millions of people and convinced them that production by all is better than production, production for all. Let's hope this book will explain messages of equality, justice, and sarvodaya through the spinning wheel of India. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to do Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, my Maharaji. We are now invited to be the Kulkarni Ji for the prayer. Thank you, Maharaji. 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 Thank you, Maharaji.
words are inadequate to express my feelings of gratitude towards all of you and also towards many others who aren't here. I write this book only because of their blessings, encouragement and support. I have made mention only one person of very, very special. And I also have uttered these blessings. Thank you, Namita, Ranjan, Neha, for bringing his blessings. Dr. Kalam, how can I ever thank you enough? You have honored me by agreeing to read my book. You are a source of inspiration to throngs of Indians of all ages, especially the youth of children. You are absolutely unique among living Indians in the way you integrate the themes of science, technology, sustainable development, spirituality, communal harmony, education and family values in a holistic way and in ways that motivate the people. You motivate me to go down this energy. Friends, why did I write this book? Three reasons. One, writing this book has been my own inner journey to rediscover the Mahatma and in some ways to rediscover myself. The opening chapter very briefly describes that part of my intellectual and spiritual journey which took me from the Mahatma to Marx, Karl Marx, and back to Mahatma. Secondly, this book is my attempt to express a conviction that Gandhiji remains the greatest and the most reliable uniting force in an India that is badly and so sadly fragmented on past, communal, ideological, and political lines. This conviction in me is growing stronger by the day events. I have begun to very strongly believe that all of our all of political parties and all of our ideological streams need to understand Mahatma Gandhi afresh. In particular, I deeply wish that the thinking people in our two main political parties, my own party, the BJP, and the Congress, should rediscover the relevance of Gandhi. Gandhi represents the holy Ganga in which all tributaries of good thoughts and good activism can work. Therefore, I am very grateful for the presence of Dr. Shashi Tharoor, Manish Tiwariji, Manish Shankar Iyer from the Congress. I am grateful for the presence of several Ambedkarites. I am grateful for the presence of several others who represent other ideological streams. Friends and dignity. Gandhi Smriti is a sacred place. This is where the mortal Mahatma became immortal. Each time I visit this place, the thought that comes powerfully to my mind is this. All of us are welcome in this larger Gandhi family, irrespective of our identity and affiliation. Indeed, the entire world is Gandhi's family. There is a gem of a saying of Gandhi inscribed at the place in Gandhi Smriti where the world keeps born in fact. So we might, might have seen it. The Mahatma says, I do not wish to live in a world that is not one. I do not wish to live in a world that is not one. And this phrase brings me to the third reason why I wrote this book. Our world is indeed becoming one. Thanks to the revolutionary power of the internet. The internet is changing our world in a fundamental, fundamental way. Indeed, we are beginning, we are seeing the beginning of a tsunami of changes brought about by the internet. We cannot even adequately comprehend what India will be like and what the world will be like towards the end of the century. As Ray Kurzweil, a renowned techno futurist, who I interviewed for this book says, the non-biological intelligence residing in the digital technologies will be a trillion times greater than the natural and biological intelligence of man by 2050. One of the changes will be 
that digital technology will become an integral part of the human body itself. The distinction between machine and man will become less and less. Which is why I have said in my book that the internet is less of a technology and more of an extension of human faculty. It is the species mind of mankind. This species mind, if it is guided by ethics, by wisdom, will propel the human race into a higher trajectory of evolution. Rishi Aurobindo says that we are all less than human today. Tomorrow we can become more than human. How can this happen? How will this happen? I have tried to find some answers to this question. Technology, if it is wedded to Gandhian wisdom and the wisdom of all the great Mahatmas and prophets around the world, will ensure that human race will indeed become more than human. This trend is what Gandhi was seeking and striving to his humble spinning wheel. He was in constant quest for technology and politics for building a new and harmonious civilization. Through the music of the spinning wheel, he was praying and crying tirelessly for the arrival of a new civilization. A civilization without war, without violence, without hatred, without injustice, without oppression of women and other weaker sections of society, without insensitivity towards animals, trees and other creations of Mother Nature. This was probably a utopian dream in the past. But now we have a technological tool that can help us move closer to realizing that dream. The internet, more than any other invention in human history, holds the power and the potential to help us create a new human order. The short film or book that you watched at the beginning of Function Trends says, a new, just, peaceful, beautiful world is being born. I believe in that and I urge all of you to believe in that. I really believe that a new age is dawning. This is not the hour to be caught asleep. This is the time for all of us to become internet of Japanese, to welcome the new world. The Gandhian world, the world that we made possible by the revolutionary power of technology and science. Thank you, friends. Thank you for the easy of the Salaam from the Jazz. Adam Sarji, Shashi Dharuji, and Shekhar Guttaji, and Vish Manimala, Vikish Rakshak, and my friend Sudhendra Dukhani, all the Honourable members of Parliament, writers, book lovers, authors, academicians, as students, and members of the publishers, amenities, publications, and the city guests. Friends, first of all, I am very happy to see so many have come on this event of the release of the book Musical Spinning Wheels by Slender Company. So I am delighted to participate in the launch of the book Music of the Spinning Wheels Mahatma Gandhi's Manifesto for the Internet Age written by Sri Linda Kutan. The book we did is a very research work which surely reference of 98 connected works of Mahatma Gandhi and 533 intensive references in 36 chapters and with an epilogue with a heading that is time we became internet satyagrahis. That's how the book ends. Now, when my friend in the book, we time we became the internet satyagrahis. I read the word. 
subject he my thoughts went back to the event which took place in year 2004 i was within the south africa to address the south african parliament and the pan african parliament with 50 members one of the programs organized during my visit into the travel from tagore province to peter martin's park this visit of mine was simulated as it happened in 1893 with mahama bhatma gandhi traveled from tagore to peter martin's park in a train hauled by a steamer he was from third station that mahatma embarked on the fateful journey that he had to hear to record the heavy change in the course of his life he boarded the train mahatma gandhi boarded the train at that time he was gandhi he boarded the train on 7th june 1893 he not to travel to pretoria where he was due to meet legal clients he was that he was booked to him the train reached peter martin's bus station at about 9 pm a white passenger a white passenger traveling with him so he went out and returned to two officials who ordered gandhi to move to the back of bus for the first class compartment he had now to move to the back of bus later the white constable was called to put gandhi by hand and push him out of the train his luggage was also taken out and train continued the journey to toshi gandhi spent the night in the waiting room it was a winter and the weather was bitterly cold and although his overcoat was in the luggage gandhi did not ask for it he He had been in further research. When I arrived at the Peter Martin's bus railway station in 2004, I saw a black in the railway station with red gates. In the vicinity of this black, Yehudi Gandhi was evicted from first class compartment on the night of 7th June 1893. This incident changed his course of life. This was a display was going on. He took up the fight that he had racial oppression, and he actually now we can start it from that day. Now, while looking at the play, I visualize what kind of feeling and thoughts would have progressed in the mind of Gandhi on the fateful day of the race. Gandhi was at the Peter Martin's bus railway station from 9 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the next train car. During his mind, thoughts were racing. His mind, thoughts were racing in his mind. Between 9 p.m. and 12 p.m., one of the thoughts taking shape was, "I must punish that person." As I said, all of us do, human beings. I must punish that person. Then during midnight, 12 midnight and 3 a.m., second wave of thoughts came to Mahatma Gandhi. Which there said, I should leave South Africa and law and law practice and go back to India and live happily as many doctors do. Between three a.m. and six a.m., the third wave of thought emerged, which led to a great decision: What can I do to Africa? And this decision between three a.m. and six a.m. What can I do to Africa? We do it apparently using methods of free market stuff. That's how. 7th June 1893, the killing of Sajjadha Bhuman took place, which finally led India to the United States. Friends, this concept is brought up beautifully by Sajjadha Bhuman as the sign of non-violence propagated by Bharat Mata. After the end of First World War, Japan was more convinced about the power of brute force. They were convinced about the power of brute force. To counter this, Mahatma Gandhi wrote the article, the Doctrine of Sword, that is put in the book also, Doctrine of Sword, to explain 
the doubt in the Indians and also in the Britishers who doubted Mahatma Gandhi's true motive behind starting the non-cooperation movement that the sword of non-violence was more powerful than the sword of violence Mahatma Gandhi says in Sudhendra Sudhendra who says the religion of Gandhi as Gandhi said religion of non-violence is not meant merely for the Rishis and Saints it is meant for the common man as well. Strength does not come from physical capacity. It comes from the indomitable will. I have therefore done it. I have therefore ventured to place before India the ancient law of self-sacrifice. Non-violent is the law of the species as violent the law of the brute. The spirit lies dormant in brute and he knows no law but the physical mind is what Dr. Ram said. And the, now friend, a very interesting event given by Sendra in the book, famous book. And I was reading again and again that chapter of this book, Sendra's book, the book of music of Swimming Beats. I realized the analysis and the conclusion that is realized by the other research. Great works, great works lead to what we have learned in the past, what we have learned in the present, and what we need to learn in the future. That's the lesson of the whole book. Particularly, Sudhendra has brought out a para as a reference from Game India as Sadek Gandhi. What does he say? The saving of labor, he says, God says, the saving of labor of individual should be the object, not human greed and worship. That for instance, I welcome every day a machine. See what he says. Gandhi says, that for instance, I welcome every day a machine to strengthen the crooked fingers. Not that blackness will cease to make fingers, they will continue to provide fingers, but when the spinner goes around, every spinner will have a machine to get it right. Therefore, we play greed by love, everything will be alright. We want Gandhi. The message of Mahatma Gandhi is beautifully brought in this book. We see today how a handheld mobile telephone can help the milk worker, the paper boy, the auto rickshaw driver, homemaker to improve their productivity and navigate their time better. Technology is helping everyone and every sector. I remember reading about Sassi Ram and how it took me more than one month. To, see, to get a single research paper from abroad in the 1930s as the paper has traveled from library to another, one library to another, by a hotspot ships and the Today, with a high bandwidth internet, I'm experiencing the same paper or even thousands of papers can be electronically transferred from one research laboratory to anywhere in the world in, time, in, in a time of three seconds. We get to make a mouse click. Today with all modern electronic communication, we can have all the information in the world at the convenience of single mobile phone and it's inspired to know that how dying it is. When mobile phones were not given a deal, telephones were product of all the amazement with the human and animal power plant transport by the order of the day and when the foreign government repressive, won't be what we did in the 1930s was here to communicate with the entire nation, enlighten them, mobilize them as one entity for a common agenda for three years. When, when, hence when Gandhi teaches, teaches us that the leader lives in the hearts of the people who became his boy in the world called the country. This is a message for the world leaders for a true statement. Gandhi even with his limited communication channels in those days, even while in house arrest, stood for a complete personal transfer. Personal transfer. Today, we see, we are, we are seeing a different time when the global leadership, while having all the opportunity to use the modern technology to be transparent and open, is very of using them to connect to the people. This is the lesson we have learned from God. Friends, in conclusion, and even as a past, take many languages. Researching in the internet, thinking through socialization, and manifest in different forms. When I understand, what I understand from the book is that he is trying to make the past 
meet the present and create a new future as visualized by Mahatma Gandhi. When I was reading, when I was reading and reading the chapters of book of music pretty big, the great message of Gandhi Yamane. What's the message of Gandhi? The great message of Gandhi Yamane. What is the message? He said, you are Gandhi, he said, you are beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. Now with these words, I launched the book of the Spinning Me Mahatma Gandhi's Manifesto for the internet age written by Sri Siddhartha Sukhani.